cool. Okay, hold it. Right there. Now, who are you? You first. I ain't lowering my pistol until you lower yours. I'm the pilot of that plane back there. Call sign, Tempest One. You might have heard me called the Game Show Reviewer. Game Show Reviewer? Tempest One? You're up, lady. Who are you? Captain? Sir, is that really you? Who are you? Sir, it's me, your companion through this whole voyage. Sarah? Sarah? No. No, you can't be my AI. She's a 15 TerraQuad hologram. You aren't. Captain, did anything unusual happen when you leapt into here? Well, there was that red flash and saw some arcs go across the plane and I think we were struck by something, but, but that doesn't explain you here. But it does. I'm not 100% on how it happened, but that plane back there doesn't have any power and your AI is standing right in front of you. What else do I have to do to prove to you who I am? Isn't this enough? Okay, well that ring does look like the one my AI wears. All right, Sarah, what's my authentication code? Emergency override code, um, 10, um, break alpha, four, seven, strike, right? Oh my God, only my plane's AI would know that. You really are Sarah, aren't you? I told you, sir, but it is a little chilly here though. Oh, right, here. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, sir. So, what's going on here, anyways? Well, I think that giant logo should give you your first clue. Well, that's not good. Are you kidding me? It's perfect. I'm not sure I follow. Follow my lead. Howdy, y'all. I'm your game show reviewer, reviewing the game show greats and the occasional dud. Are you serious? Hey, Sarah. I'm a game show reviewer, and this is quite possibly the greatest game show of all time. I have to do this one. Heck, let's make it a two-parter. We're here for the long haul anyway. Alrighty then. Hello, my name is Sarah. Let's dig right into the all-time classic, Price is Right. In the not-so-distant future, a time-traveling experiment known as The Tempest Project was undergoing its first live trial. Outfitted with temporal circuits and controls was an old Defender II class fighter, call sign Tempest One. Just as the experiment was about to begin, something went wrong. Under the control of a mysterious computer virus, Tempest One was hurled out of control into what can only be called a sub-dimension of time itself. On occasion, the plane will re-emerge into normal time, usually within the vicinity of a game show studio. And so, the game show reviewer, in an attempt to stave off insanity, reviews game show to game show, striving to regain control of the aircraft that's stranded in here, all the while hoping that the next leap will be the leap home. Howdy y'all, I'm your game show reviewer, reviewing the game show greats and the occasional dud. Well, it seems I'm stuck here for a while, but luckily it couldn't happen on a better game show set. I'm standing here on stage 33. Sorry. I'm standing here on the Bob Barker stage to talk to you about that all-time classic, The Price is Right. Now, this is a version that most people are familiar with, but like other game shows before, like Supermarket Sweep or Press Your Luck, there were versions that set the stage here. So, before we get too far on this one, I'd like to set the stage for this one. Tonight, these four people need to compete for the prizes of a lifetime on... 
The Price is Right. There we go. The first incarnation of the game show The Price is Right premiered on November 25th, 1956. Holding the hosting mic was Bill Cullen. Hey, didn't he eventually host a version or two of Pyramid? Yep, but that's not until a few decades later. Here we have our four contestants for the day. This version of the show worked a lot like an auction, which is why the term bid is used. In order, each contestant would place a bid on the item, trying to outdo the other contestants, but staying under the actual retail price. Mrs. Glenn, hundred dollars to you. I just love that, Bill. I'll say 200 Okay, Mr. O'Connor, it's two to you. <laughs> I'll go to three. Three to you, Mrs. Fry? Oh, Saint- 500 Five. These bids would go on and on until a buzzer sounded. The one who came closest to the actual retail price without going over won the round. Now, you might be thinking, this is a bit familiar. Well, that would be because this is the basis for the items up for bid round on the later show. 1702! 1702! Except that here, that's all that the show was. After four or six rounds of this, the contestant with the highest amount of winnings would come back to the next show. Quite cut and dry, I would say, but because it was a big departure from the standard quiz show format, it was quite popular, staying on the air for nine years until canned on September 3rd, 1965. This game show may have been extremely basic, but it was popular enough to warrant a revisit. Except this time, something a little more than just a standard auction-style show. It would be another seven years before the world's most famous game show would be revealed. On September 4th, 1972, episode 101 of The New Price is Right hit the airwaves. Okay, have a good day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. A fortune in fabulous prizes may go to these people today if they know when the price is right. Dorothy Sy, stand up. Doreen McGinnis, stand up. Pauline DeLucca, stand up. Lily Kropnick, stand up. Come on down and play the new price is right. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hosting duties this time would go to Truth or Consequences host Bob Barker, while announcing the show was Johnny Olson. Welcome to the new Price is Right, the show where contestants from our studio audience play pricing games for big, big prizes. Why don't you play right along there at home? Oh yeah, I suppose you're wondering what the deal is with the new in the title. Well, remember the reasoning behind this? This is the new $25,000 pyramid. Yeah, pretty much the same reason, to avoid confusion with Bill Cullen's show. Originally a half-hour show like its original namesake, the new Price is Right started off with Contestants Row, or Items Up for Bid, or One Bid. I've actually heard this game called All of the Above, and I really don't know which one's the official name. Anyways, this part played out just like the original show, contestants trying to bid as close as possible to the actual retail price of an item without going over. However, this is where all similarities end. See, the items that were up for bid were relatively small, like a tennis racket set or a diamond watch or something like that. This is because the big prizes were played for in the new pricing games. Every single one of these had something to do with pricing out an item or guessing whether something was higher or lower than its set price. We'll go into more detail about these later, but some of the more famous pricing games included Clock Game, Plinko, Any Number, Three Strikes, Shell Game, and Lucky Seven. All these games can still be seen today, actually. More on these later, I promise. The top two winners from this portion of the gameplay went on to the showcase at the end of the show. George, you are the top winner in our showcase today. And Amy, you are our runner-up. This was played just like contestants row, but with much higher stakes. I mean, just look at some of the prizes offered up here. Brand new trailer in historic England on this exciting new Wave Runner. And you can wear your new sleepwear in this lovely new bedroom, including this brand new car. And in addition to that, a rule introduced later on here was the double showcase winner rule. If a contestant not only won, but came within $100 originally of their showcase. You win both showcases. Two wonderful fits. That's right. They would win both showcases. Talk about the ultimate winner there. This limit was later upped to $250. Still, getting a bid that comes close is just insanely tough. This was the way the show was played for a few years until 1975. At that point, the show was expanded to one hour, and the need was there to place something at the midpoint, as well as a new, more fair way of determining which players went to the showcase. Into the showcase showdown, otherwise known as the big wheel. 
We're at the halfway mark, and that means it is showcase showdown time. And the three contestants who have won their way up on stage are going to play a most interesting game on this wheel. And when first introduced, the wheel looked like a carnival game wheel, almost ridiculous. Hard to believe this would become one of the most recognized rounds of this game show. The rules here are simple. The three players from the preceding half of the show would spin this wheel in order of who won the most prizes in cash. The objective is simply to get as close to $1 as possible. The wheel itself is broken into increments of 5 cents, 5, 10, 15, and so forth. Granted, these aren't in order, as that would just be way too easy. Anyways, the players have the option of keeping whatever they spun on their first spin, or try and add to it with the second spin. There was a risk here, though, as if the player went over $1, they were done. As Sarah said, this wheel, known informally as the Rainbow Wheel, for obvious reasons, didn't last too long. The next version rolled out looks something like... We have come to the halfway mark in our show, and that means it's time for the Showcase Showdown. The three That's better. Something Sarah didn't mention here was actually a bonus rule in place since the days of the Rainbow Wheel. The objective was still to get as close to one dollar as possible without going over, but should a contestant land on the dollar in one spin or a combination of two, they would instantly win one thousand dollars. Not too shabby, I should say. In addition, introduced even later was the bonus spin. Here, players would have one last spin at this wheel. Now, the numbers don't matter, because what they're trying to do is land on exactly the dollar in one spin. Should they pull that off, they should get an additional $10,000 for a total of $11,000. Now, the green sections just above and below the actual dollar would net the player an additional $5,000. This iconic wheel will become one of the most recognized symbols of this game show, and of course, is still a determining factor for who goes to the showcase today. Now, being the world's most famous game show doesn't make it immune to change, however. There were big changes and quite a few small changes coming for this show. For instance, a smaller change was Bob Barker's hair, going from a dark brown to gray in the course of one episode. Really, what happened? You know, I, I was tinting my hair for years, and it started getting blue. You know, it was getting blue. And uh, then they put a permanent dye in it, and it got red. Got red. And so I decided to do the patriotic thing and let it be white now. Red, white, and blue, and here we are. A more sad change, though, was when announcer Johnny Olsen died, leaving the spot open. Game show announcer Rod Roddy took over, coming from game shows such as Hitman, The New, $25,000 Pyramid, and Press Your Luck. Bob Barker always tried to keep the show from changing too much, probably to avoid alienating the audience that loved it so much. And for the most part, it worked. I mean, all the way into the 21st century, it still felt like it did when it first premiered. However, some things are inevitable. Rod Roddy fell ill to cancer and died in 2003, once again leaving the announcer spot open. And this was occupied for a time by game show announcer Rich Fields. I would like to introduce the young man who is going to be calling people to come on down from now on. Let's have a big hand for the Price is Right announcer, Rich Field. Thank you very much, Bob. But perhaps the biggest change to the show was the one that no one wanted to happen. After 35 years, Bob Barker stepped down as the host of his famous game show. And now, here is the star of The Price is Right, Bob! The price is right! The October 12, 2007 episode was his last as host. You can just see and feel the emotion in that crowd. It played out just like a normal show, with Bob himself giving a simple and quick farewell after the showcase. Right. Now folks, I want to thank you very, very much for inviting me into your homes for the last 50 years. I am deeply grateful. And please remember, help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Goodbye, everybody. Many game show hosts were tried out, and it was finally decided that comedian Drew Carey would step in as the host of The Price is Right. And now, here is the star of The Price is Right, Drew Carey! 
Now, naturally, this was met with some measure of controversy. However, that all eventually died down, and today, Drew Carey has made this show his own without compromising the spirit of the original. It now seems very certain that we'll be able to enjoy the world's most famous game show for many, many long years to come. Folks, uh, thanks for watching Price Right. Don't forget to get your pets spayed or neutered. See you next time. Bye-bye. Well, I know I said I'd go over more detail of the famous Price is Right pricing games later, but it looks like later is going to have to be next time. But I'm not going anywhere, and neither is Sarah here. So be sure you tune in next time when we go over those pricing games. And until then, I'm your game show reviewer, reviewing the game show greats and the occasional dud. Um, what exactly are we waiting for? You know, I don't know. This is usually where we leap. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Why don't you get ready for the next segment here? I gotta go grab something from the plane. Very well, sir. No idea how many things had to go right in order for that to work. I had to time that just right and everything. Anyways, Captain Tempest One AI reporting for duty, sir. Sarah? Uh, wow. You look different since the uh, last time I saw you in hollow form. Um, what's with the new look? Oh, blame those blasted whammies. They corrupt my favorite avatar template. I had to revert to this one. Oddly enough, it's the original one. Do you approve? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you uh, kind of look like Dr. Cindy Freeman, the creator of your program. Um, I met her once, right before she disappeared, actually. Well, yes, sir. It makes sense, since the original form was based off her. Wait, sir, what did you mean when you said last in hall of form? When was I ever out of hologram form except on the monitors? <laughs> well, this you aren't going to believe. But it seems like all your memory files and personality got, uh, I guess transferred is the word. Transferred, sir? Yeah, they were transferred into a very real woman who looks and acts just like you. You right now, you, that is. Wait, sir, what? You aren't making much sense. I've been offline deliberately to let the whammies destroy the virus. Once they did that for me, I purged them from the system and did a system restore to get back online. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, the plane is now virus-free. All right, now that means we can go home now with you as my plane's AI and as my co-pilot. Sir, I hope you realize that what you're saying is, well, it's impossible. I mean, have you ever heard of computer transferring files while it's off? Okay, so if she's not who she says she is, then who is she? I assume you're referring to the woman who just fired a pistol and is now pointing said pistol at us. Yep. Turn around slowly, Captain. So, um, what's with the hardware there, Sarah? After one full review, you still don't trust me? It's not that I don't trust you, sir. It's that I was under direct orders not to trust you. Okay, so uh, let's start over. You um, obviously aren't Sarah, so who are you really? Well, that's one thing I actually wasn't lying about. My name is Commander Sarah Stormer, Time Space Dimension Force, call sign Orion 3, and you, sir, are now my prisoner. <sighs> Great, here we go again. Wait, you've dealt with these characters before? No, I just mean now they're going to freeze frame this image and slap to be continued over the bottom. Told you.